thanks very much to my wonderful viewers. The story of the third atomic bomb continues with a bizarre twist. So, as we know, the third atomic bomb was never dropped. It was a Hiroshima, or should I say Hiroshima, twin core uranium type device. Now unneeded, its core was returned to Los Alamos for processing. It was carefully forged into two half hemispheres and used by scientists for radiation experiments who were specifically looking into criticality. Now criticality is when there is enough neutrons in the unstable atomic material to produce a chain reaction and emit a large burst of alpha particles, beta particles, gamma rays, x-rays, all kind of nasty stuff that if you're close enough to will kill you. So the newly reformed core was kept in two separate boxes. It was often dragged out of the storeroom to demonstrate various effects. One of them was this. If you carefully surrounded the two separate cores with a neutron reflector, this would intensify the neutrons bouncing back into the core, producing more radiation. But it was vital that the two halves of the core were kept apart and it did not go critical. And this is where the story becomes really strange. In my film, and in many films about the testing of nuclear weapons, we've probably seen this guy, this rather cool looking guy, in shirt sleeves at the White Sands' first nuclear test. Meet Dr. Louis Slotin, a brilliant physicist who worked on the Manhattan Project and later, after World War II, continued his research at the Los Alamos Laboratory. A dynamic character and supposedly a bit of a risk taker. He would often demonstrate to other scientists the near criticality of the third atomic bomb's core. There were safety protocols in place, but Slotin removed the safety devices and used a flat bladed screwdriver to maintain the safety distance between the reflector and the core. And of course, the inevitable happened. One evening, while demonstrating the core's potential, his hand slipped, the screwdriver fell out, and the reflector closed the gap, causing the core to go critical. All they would have experienced was a bright flash in the back of their eyes as x-rays, gamma rays, and all kinds of radiation went right through their bodies. The criticality incident only lasted for a couple of seconds. Slotin managed to knock off the reflector and this stopped the core being critical, but everybody in the room got a large dose of radiation. Sadly, Slotin who was nearest to the core, received a fatal dose. He died from a massive radiation dose nine days later. Now, you probably know this story because the core was then named the Demon Core. After the fateful incident, it was melted down and parts of it became cores in atomic weapon testing. So there was never a third atomic weapon dropped on Japan, but its deadly core went on to kill an American scientist. The truth is out there.